we should now move on to our audience questions they also are the stars of the day and we are moving close on to our time so a hearty welcome to the winners from amongst our audience we've had a diverse audience and some interesting questions uh, we had expected professionals and though we did get a large uh, number of professionals asking us questions we also got questions from other people too now some questions and though they are provoked by a specific episode are generic and reflect our citizens growing civic engagement which is welcome there are other questions which are about specific episodes as we had asked them to pinpoint the episode in the form that we circulated and pertain to the design solutions proposed as well as ways of working in the not so new normal we are all experiencing again these are indicative of a good amount of interest from our audience which is good so our first uh, winner is uh, rishikesh farki and uh, rishikesh we request you to briefly introduce yourself and ask your questions i think uh, you have chosen episode 4 as uh, for your questions but there were a couple of questions which we as a team felt could go to all the uh, participants to rishikesh screen uh good evening everyone good evening uh, urbila ma'am first of all congrats to the winners as well as participants and also uh, congrats to the organizers for organizing a very interesting process because uh, by today's session i realized there is a lot of things which has happened behind the scene and many a times uh, when you see at the end result of any competition you are focusing more on the winning entry or winners but however many a times such kind of uh, behind the scenes activities and the processes are rarely published i think uh, thanks to urmila ma'am for initiating this uh, kind of activity because this is uh, also helping other people to get inspired from for organizing such uh, events and competitions so i have uh, enlisted about three questions which i had uh, mentioned two are generic ones and one is more of a specific one i think i'll go one after the other and not put all questions together so that i think you can direct the question to the uh, team or uh, individual sure uh, my first question was about uh, sustainability and uh, was uh, what was the primary factor acknowledged by you which highlights or aims towards successful canal oriented development and its sustainability so i think uh, that's my first question anybody can just uh, the feedback or answer to it or you can direct it to the individual so rishikesh had directed this after seeing episode 4 so it was for the team who uh, team urban balconies so would team urban balconies like to go for it or would would you like to spread it across yeah sure we we can take that question so uh, as we see the brief the brief gives uh, and put us on a revival of the canals and water systems it looks into public spaces and integrating water and cycling and public transport infrastructure and the third one was social inclusion these three aspects were most important primarily given focus across the board out of these out of these three uh, parameters we chose to give more impetus to us rejuvenation of water systems revival of the water systems and we used the other two to plug into the overall Scheme, scheme of things. So for us, uh, I think revival of water systems was the most important and the primary aspect uh, overall scheme. So what do you want to add? So I think you have directed this question, ma'am, to our team. Uh, uh, the fourth uh, session that is team. Well, that's. That's yeah, right. So I have a more specific question for them. So can I continue because I had actually enlisted that as a last question, but since sure, we are on online, ahead. I Correct. think I'll put my you question. Uh, yeah. To them, I'll just note it down. So I saw your overall approach, and uh, is there any plan to develop or create balconies for the small internal drains which empty their water into the canal? so even similar uh, is there any small balconies for internal drains yes so the idea was that we test various possibilities of balconies across the stretch the stretch had a specific uh, boundary condition so we did not go beyond the boundary condition but what we did was we tried to uh, create various types of balconies and now these balconies are being replicated across 
Kochi. Uh, in fact, uh, even the Smart City Mission and uh, the Works for Streets for People challenge that is happening in Fort Kochi area is also taking cues from this, and some of the ideas are being replicated over there as well. So, because this competition was about Malasari Canal, so we are all our options were tested along this stretch. But the idea was that these options could be replicated all across the city based on site conditions and other options. Okay. So I think I'll I'll go ahead with my last uh, question. Sure, Rishikesh, do go ahead. The canal is currently considered and designed for uh, recreational activities, as well as uh, it's a community asset. could it be designed for diversity or multi multi use uh, in 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 any sense for example let's say for uh, farming activity or uh, hydro power is that a possibility it's it's was a general question so anybody can answer so actually in our case we thought the first idea was to re- revive the canal first i mean that can be part of the phasing but first we need to get the canal water canal revived completely first and then these activities can be tried and tested that's not at all an issue but right now i think the main objective was to uh, kind of get it revived first I think I think Rishikesh, the context also had something to do with it because it was a dense urban settlement, which of privately owned uh, areas. So that's my understanding. Maybe some of the other panelists would like to add to this in terms of this kind of a use for a canal, a canal in general. Yeah. Hi. I'd like to address that point. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Please do go ahead. Okay um so uh, one of the things we did so we did identify publicly owned land there was some KMC owned uh, land which was being used as a waste management site there was a PWD park so we were trying to and also we were looking at in situ uh, upgradation and redevelopment of low income settlements along the canal um we understand these are long term projects that require lots of stakeholder input and participation but we were providing a vision and a framework for how to do this so i think we were looking at uh, sectors such as housing uh, circular economies waste management uh, not uh, you know as co benefits to rejuvenating the canal um as well as of course flood resilience uh rather than focusing on uh, just on community open spaces as i mean although community open spaces are also very important co benefits for well being uh but these were the areas we did focus on thank you so much and amika i think you also wanted to say something uh yeah i just like to quickly add that uh, uh we did want to integrate uh, this aspect uh, into our schemes and for us it was not so much about just the canal and urban agriculture but we were trying to work in an entire ecosystem which is able to tie in uh, various aspects so we are looking at a socio ecological economic system and which is what would also prompt sustainability we were looking at situations where grey water recycling and uh, aquaponics and hydroponics uh, would be integrated and uh, the publicly available land would in some ways be gradually uh, uh, along with the canal will gradually be revived and um created specially for uh, some kind of productive use and we were looking at supporting uh, ag- urban agriculture with uh, let us say having uh, markets and uh, uh, let us say weekly markets so spaces which are integrating with the bus station area uh, open spaces which could be used as a market where the produce can actually be directly sold by the people who are producing it so uh, it was not just uh, i i think we would like to really think of such sort of things beyond just integrating uh, a space for urban agriculture as uh, it becoming more like an entire system so it is uh, it is not just about physical space but a whole system of, of uh, who are the people who are engaging with uh, the urban agriculture who are producing who are buying where is this produce being sold where, how is it being transported and all of that so yeah that's all thank you thank you so much anamika thanks thanks and would anybody else like to take on shikesh's question Yeah so I would just like to conclude by saying that uh, along the canal you can definitely look at diversified uses but ultimately it depends on the capacity of the natural system that you're dealing with so for the mullaseri canal scale you could definitely look at uh, things which should, which the capacity of the canal could accommodate 
so you feel that was a constraint in pro- in this particular site context yeah so you could look at small scale urban farming right. uh, typologies and things like that but ultimately for any natural resource the natural capacity should be considered before looking at the usage that's the question from my side uh, so thank you so much rishikesh and uh, i think we move on to the next audience question which is vivek pai yes vivek so we request you to briefly introduce yourself and i think you had broadly directed your questions at episode 2 though there were some which were identified as generic as well in your in the questions that you asked do go ahead sure uh, so hello everyone uh, firstly nice to see all the old and new friends here and also nice to see the organizers because uh, i think it was a brilliantly organized competition and uh, kudos to the entire team who was you know work on it uh, this i mean i was listening to the whole conversation of all these people and uh, i realized i just went back in time because one of my first main projects was also from kerala so it was uh, kollam to kottapuram uh, waterways uh, you know being a transportation planner it was about moving the hazardous waste to waterways and uh, we were working with ksi scientists at that time and i was just thinking that maybe you know these young guys who are you know now going to be who won and you know who are the potential execution guys for the project they might be looking at especially this first big break as well so hopefully you know uh, that happens so Uh, i broadly had three questions uh, first was for the organizers because uh, uh, i'm sure this is something which they've dealt with as well that when you're looking at a project like this which is surrounded by these cities you know where there's a lot of pressure of development urban development and uh, urban growth the land value obviously becomes a very important thing and that's where you know all the public pressure like the growth and values especially waterway so you know i'm sure that if this was in mumbai we would have probably covered it up with concrete and you know made, made it into a parking lot or something like that so so how do you you know deal with these kind of things when you're looking at this kind of competition so that was the first question for the organizers should i complete all three questions or uh, should i you know do it one by one i think one one on one by one would help because you would have to recollect re- with the questions otherwise monolita you'd like to take a you switched on your camera that's why i'm asking you would you like to answer the question that is posed Uh, well i just wanted to say that uh, a part of the canal is uh, covered with concrete slabs <laughs> so we are not far from being bombay and uh, you're absolutely right we did uh, face severe challenges of uh, the conflict between understanding uh, uh, real estate and its you know the value because this is the city center uh, but uh, this is also a city center which is getting waterlogged so we did find a lot of uh, perception on ground from the people that this is a very serious problem and uh, there need to be create there needs certain creative thinking about this so uh, while there is and that that challenge continues even at the implementation level dr rajan will be actually the right person to tell us to speak about the challenges we are already facing in terms of you know implementing the ideas in its uh, essence and spirit uh, so that challenge will continue that is always at a logger head with with you know trying to do a sustainable design where or uh, just build it to, to for the highest bidder but there is a non ground understanding that the city needs creative solutions because of the uh rain uh based water logging that we are having continuously and which probably did not happen some years ago well Maybe yeah surprisingly yeah surprisingly uh we actually have been experiencing uh, deficit rain uh over the last uh, about 5 or 6 about 5 6 years the rain quantum has been deficit and other than 2018 if you take away those 5 days when uh, it was a 100 year flood uh, phenomenon uh, the rest of the years it has been deficit rain but we have like even today also i i hear that the city center is flooded and uh, it's it's the rain pattern has changed so that is the climate crisis that this project was really uh, focusing upon the rain pattern has changed the sea levels are rising to a certain extent but the overall water impact has not changed and what has changed is the way as dr rajan very rightly said right at the beginning that it's the greed which has you know closed up all the natural resources where the water would actually stay and become part of our living 
and instead of that we've kind of cemented and concreted all of that and so the water now blocks up life and livelihood so that's what's happening more and i think it's the same story in every indian city today it's nothing new right so mm. would any of yes uh, samita I, yeah i would just uh, like to add to the as a response to the question so um what we f- feel is that actually if we bring the element of participation people's participation from say the day one of the project or uh, that may be you know be a way out to kind of uh, having more say uh, interventions which are which are suitable for the environment and for the people because ultimately concretizing and everything comes from l- lobbying and lobbyists are not be, uh, maybe they are the residents of the neighborhood but largely they are not so we feel that once we actually start working with the people on ground by ground i mean the users and the residents in wo- including the local elected representatives as well because th- what we f- believe is that they have the most uh, important knowledge of their neighborhood and how they use the neighborhood and hence we feel that if we work with that then probably uh, you know the way we perceive urban development uh, n- not as a concretized way uh, as a concretized way maybe we will get away with that because people often uh, and with this project also what we envisioned is that the participatory process should be such that we know that there are a lot of private lands along the canal and there is only a small chunk of public land available but can we trigger a participatory process which gives the residents the ownership to actually maintain the canal make the canal of their own so not something as a backyard but as a front yard which they can actually live with in a in a peaceful way you know uh, so something it's like bringing out their emotions you know into an urban it's a very subjective and very qualitative way uh, but i think this is uh, this is what we ultimately have to move towards when it comes to say climate change because it's not the people sitting in the assembly getting affected it's the ground that is getting affected people roads are getting flooded neighborhoods are getting flooded so i think their response will always be something which can help their neighborhood so yeah that that's what i would like to add yeah i would just like to add that even the institutes along the way we had a lot of participatory process with the institutes which were along the way uh we went to them to understand their needs but they wanted to participate so we got a lot of very positive response even from say the government law college and centrisas uh, institute they all wanted to be part of the project they wanted they were open to uh, design solutions coming out of this urban design com- competition for their own private land so that that's where we felt that you know that when we start talking to the actual participants on ground a lot of the conversation the energies of the conversation changes that's really interesting because that's not that's not a set of individuals but an institution coming round to there yeah and Anjana, it, yeah samita sorry go on at there uh, uh, like in recent times we also have seen in the country that lot of urban development projects are been are facing backlashes like the uh, metro project the metro shed project in ari uh protest or something happens when people are not taking into account it's not a democratic process and protest is something that people are showing their uh, anxiety rather than frust- uh, and frustration rather than any sort of agitation you know so uh, if we actually take them into the process from day one we won't face that much of backlash because they will be already well informed and the project itself and the design interventions will be already well informed by their needs and their requirements uh, so uh, it, it's something which we have to kind of almost you know go to go back to our welfare state model and work for the people and make, make the urban development process also a very democratic process uh, rather than something which is very top down 
and Kochi and Kerala gives us that platform to you know actually work with this. Otherwise, I ca- I cannot really imagine any other place. Maybe now there must be other cities and uh, administrations that are coming up. But yeah, Kochi was very welcoming with. There her. is there is already a kind of a platform where uh, the people have to be listened to, so that that does help. Though urban design even now is trying to you know morph itself to become a really participatory process, there is the entire rest of the political environment is a very embedded entrenched participatory process. So to embed a design exercise within that process is probably a little easier in Cochin than other places. Right. So Sanjana and uh, Shreya, your cameras have been coming on. I think you also want to quickly put in a few words. Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, sorry, I just want to quickly uh, make a point. Which, since we have, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Rajan and everyone else here, uh, you know, we would love uh, because doing the DPR process for Intercochi, we would love to see uh, the, uh, the recognition of the value of blue green infrastructure, um, you know, and the est- ecosystem services they provide being a part of the planning frameworks in Kochi. Um, and we really hope that uh, you know Intercochi does result in a sort of a catalytic pilot project that can bring these uh, concepts to the larger public, um, so that um, people actually at, on the ground do see understand the value uh, both intuitively as well as even through metrics and monitoring, uh, so that uh, the the, uh, the framework to actually quantify the value of uh, blue green infrastructure is established through this project. So we really hope that that happens. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much, Shreya. Sanjana, would you like to? Vivek, you yes, want to say something? Or maybe after she asks? Yeah. I'll add uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, in fact, borrowing from uh, a point that Monita made uh, earlier and uh, what Shreya uh, just mentioned. So, uh, Cochin uh, definitely has the culture and the potential to embed a participatory process. And uh, that came out through the, the stakeholder uh, meeting uh, document that uh, we went through as part of the brief as well. And we were very convinced that uh, this is possible, especially the fact that uh, Kerala and uh, uh, Cochin also already has a relationship with its inland water system. Uh, inland water transportation is already being practiced and uh, uh, being, uh, you know, kind of even planned for in the future. Um, so in that sense, a water body is already taken in, into account for urban development, uh, but probably just one aspect of it. If we are to look at water systems now as an uh, as an ecosystem that can uh, you know provide several other ecosystem services, it can balance human health, it can balance the environmental health. So if we are taken to other aspects of development as well, I think it is very much possible in this particular context. And uh, uh, now I'd like to uh, kind of talk about. Um, add to what Shreya had already mentioned, uh, when we look at uh, natural ecosystems, we generally do look at uh, uh, the qualitative aspects uh, of probably providing a, a social space, of uh, providing a, a nice environment to be in, uh, or environmental uh, benefits as well, uh, of uh, uh, creating biodiverse spaces, of uh, maintaining habitat uh, population, uh, habitat health. Uh, but when we start uh, providing quantitative evidence to all of this, and I'm sure we can because um, the reason why real estate pressure uh, really wins over protecting our natural ecosystems is because we can uh, value it, we can quantitatively value it. It has an economic uh, uh, output. Uh, so there is a quantification of that uh, real estate value and therefore there is pressure uh, to make the best of it. However, the value associated with uh, developing and uh, protecting natural resources can be looked at in terms of the amount of uh, uh, money that we can save instead of you know how much value is going to add to our lives we we will be saving a lot over a long period of time and i think that can also be brought into the metrics of uh, the value of ecosystems thank you vivek i think to some extent they have also adarsha wants to say adarsh wants to say something but i was just about just to say that maybe they've answered your next question as well in this question itself. So, Adish, do go ahead. Very pertinent question, and probably it requires a next episode on this whole topic of development and uh, nature. And this has been our uh, uh, pain point across the years. You know, sometimes we've decided to keep the nature aside and keep developing, or we've taken over nature and developed. 
in this particular case we thought why don't we find opportunities of capitalizing the opportunities provided by uh, the nature itself we never tested with private uh, uh, private development integrated with public spaces or public areas and nature gardens so we took that opportunity and we tried to test where all can the uh, water system and the nature and natural ecosystem get integrated with private development so that's one particular test area of test that we chose to work on thank you so much adarsh and uh, vivek i would suggest maybe that since people have answered the second question that you were going to ask which was about wetlands in this would you like to go ahead to the uh, third question or how would you like to do this we yeah, are yeah. a little tight yeah we are already in short of time so i think yeah. uh, i just go to the third question which was related to the public space so because i think uh, one of the uh, participants also said that they were uh, not talking to the uh, public uh, institutions who wanted to get their public spaces also as a part of the project which is very interesting actually and uh, Uh, and you know that's what the question was about. How do you balance public space uh, in an institution? You know, because there is a lot of conflicts that actually start happening. And you know, how do you actually balance out that? I think that can go to all the participants. So uh, some of the ways in which we looked at uh, uh, sharing resources, especially open space with the public, uh, between the public and the institutions, was to uh, look at a, a time-based approach. Uh, that was one uh, such idea. Maybe after institutional hours, it is open to the public. And it's not going to be entirely open. Also, it's going to be uh, guarded for security reasons. That is absolutely essential. And uh, we can also look at uh, the maintenance cost that is uh, you know, involved in in uh, uh, using uh, or sharing these resources uh, so if the resources are shared the maintenance cost can also be shared uh, which can also bring down conflict to a large extent and even through the day if uh, we are to look at the canal to be uh, accessed and used by these institutions we would not be able to restrict uh, the movement of public along the canal edges so ultimately there will be a little bit of flow into uh, some spaces uh, on either side of the canal so if we are able to provide uh, some portion of institutional or private land uh, which can be accessed by the public across the day uh, at all times uh, that would be a great uh, cooperative effort uh, in bringing together the sustainability of this entire project and in fact making it a successful attempt thank you so much sanjana and uh, vivek we move to the next questions in that case oh, thank, thank you, you so me. much vivek and uh, i'd like to uh, just flag a slight change in program because uh, we have a request from team plus which is the episode 3 team uh, there is somebody who needs to move on from there and in fact what has also happened is that our audience uh, member who was uh, who was asked questions directed at uh, will be selected for the question that she directed to episode 3 has uh, not been able to due to her challenges enter our meeting so i think what i'll do is i'll just give you the questions maybe you could answer them so she had some a couple of specific questions for you which the first one was you mentioned the concept of borrowed edges in your presentation what exactly does this concept mean uh hi uh, so uh borrowed edges is actually just a term we coined uh, in order to convey uh, a range of um, strategies that we were trying to um put together which we thought would help in uh, transforming the stretch of canal road from karikamuri cross till the bus station uh which uh, and we would we were really looking forward to uh create it as a stretch which is a vibrant uh, pedestrian oriented zone um and of, of on and having a diverse uh, nature and character urban character so uh, we understood from the brief that currently there is a lot of there were um, many uh, trading and um, warehousing uh, facilities located in the stretch of the road so we were using this term to uh, uh, sort of you know like an umbrella term to uh, look at strategies like uh, incentivized uh, transformation of building use um, so we 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 were suggesting that there's some kind of incentives for uh, transforming the use let us say uh, for a certain depth uh, from the plot boundary line uh, we also noticed that there were several public 
buildings uh, on that street which had some amount of open space in front so and space being very valuable for us uh, throughout this entire stretch uh, we thought that there were uh, there was a possibility of incentivizing in some manner having a more porous edge and so therefore borrowing the plot edge uh, right. or borrowing the front setback of the plots for public use whether it is actual physical use in terms of having retail or such sort of uses or even at least visually integrating that space with the uh, zone of the street and therefore trying to transform the nature thank you so much anamika there there are these questions are coming to you from minel gajar who's a student okay. of landscape architecture actually and okay. uh, she is a part of a three year program that we run in my own college so they work side by side and i think somewhere that's what has uh you know created a problem with her being in the okay. meeting as a task for questions i completely understand i completely understand and really apologies for disrupting the agenda but um, no i have very long commute which i'll uh, it'll become just a little difficult for me but sure. i'm very happy to answer the questions so the second question that she asked was that you mention implementability as key to the design decisions does this in any way compromise the design and if so why is it better to accept the compromise and move ahead uh well i'd like to say at the outset that uh, implementability was key to our design not only because the brief was stressing on implementability but because that completely resonates with the way we work as a team as an office um and we we weren't uh, really thinking of it as something that was compromising our design in fact uh, quite the opposite uh, the questions of implementability help us make better choices be uh, refine our designs and be more specific to the nature of intervention that we were trying to propose and it is because of implementability and because of the given site condition and our understanding of uh, the urban nature of this entire area and the whole precinct not just the canal and its surroundings um that we realized that it it would be uh, it would actually the approach that we were trying to take of conservative surgery of making small changes smaller uh, gradual changes rather than having a whole scale wiped out uh, uh, design a fresh approach is something that uh, came very very much out of uh, the idea of ensuring implementability of what we were doing thank you so much anamika her third question was a little bit generic what she said was give it actually pertain to the fact that you were you spoke about your macro decisions first and then how they change when you came further so given the fact that the canal could not be uncovered in many places due to limitations on site would it be possible to improve its ecology or would it remain degraded uh well ideally uh, we would have liked our uh, team member who is a landscape architect to answer this but because he is in a completely different time Opposite. zone i think i'll take this opportunity to speak on his behalf um so uh, first is that uh, we we what we realized again because of implementability that there were certain sections of the canal across which several plots were um, uh, using basically uh, deriving their access from that point uh, which is something we could not simply just remove so we could not really say that we can uncover the entire stretch of the canal so uh, even though we decided we could uncover some parts of the plot frontage we still really had to leave certain bits behind to ensure the accessibility to the plot adjacent to the canal and um, uh, as far as the fact that whether it would remain degraded i'm sure it involves larger questions of what is happening upstream and downstream the canal both because we're also looking at a very very new situation for us at least which uh, where we were looking at flood waters um, tide waters sorry which were uh, coming into the canal as well as uh, it also being uh, conveying local uh the the watershed uh, uh the the run uh, runoff from the watershed area so uh we are we are really hoping that uh, uh while this is being implemented i'm sure that uh, several such considerations will be taken into account but uh yes we do we did feel that it was uh, a little bit of a problem that we were unable to not only not uncover the canal at places but also uh we felt a little restricted in terms of how the red edge conditions were because of the unavailability of uh, public land right so it 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 would require a uh, uh, much more uh, involved engagement to sort of sort out those issues and work towards uh, reviving and uh, 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 sort of you know ensuring that the degradation of the canal is reversed in some right. way so it didn't become a pillar of your design in this particular situation 
it was a fact yes. that you accepted that kind of a situation yes and um, this is i think a, a, a little also fueled by the fact that uh, uh we were not able to visit sai there was uh, no one on the two team he was very familiar with the city so yeah is the kind of a we were on slightly iffy ground over here right thank you so much anamika uh this was a generic question so if anybody from any other team would like to take it very quickly we could take it or we move on to the next person um hi armila this is manishi from team spun yes manishi so just quickly adding to the point about the canal itself and you know what happened in terms of design decisions for the canal um i mean as anamika also mentioned there were certain parts of the canal that were absolutely very difficult to uncover and not just that there was also difficulty in naturalizing the canal so we um there's so when the design brief was issued there was um a lack of certain information and data sets for us to take that kind of a decision of you know what is the ecology currently what is the state at which the canal what is the quality of the water and um, also the ground water is very saturated in kochi hence uh, you know naturalizing the bed or opening up the edge can also create other complications uh, in the aquifer so um all of that i feel is a much uh, bigger uh, process requires a lot of other engineers inputs on it as well as a lot of data sets to take practical implementable decisions on yeah right thank you manishi i think i quickly move on to the next uh, person asking questions and this is nidhi kapri so nidhi addressed her question specifically to the team of episode 4 so i think episode 4 you're not let off you're getting a lot of questions Nidhi, would you like to go ahead quickly? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, I actually had two questions. One is quite specific to episode four, which is with respect to the Kochi urban balconies, and the other one is very generic, which uh, actually prompted me, you know, while I was seeing that, and it prompted me all the more while I was watching this program. So it says about like you know, as a team, uh, or because uh, episode four people are there. so i would concentrate more on episode 4 right now sure nidhi so in your presentation you had mentioned that reducing the height of the canal would uh, drip the water outside so i would just i was very curious to know will it solve the problem or you know would it create some flooding in the area that is with respect to the design part yeah so i'll i'll take it up uh, nidhi sure so so basically see uh, arnakulam is a low lying area and flooding is uh, the reality on site Mo- monolita has already mentioned lot of things related to the flooding you know uh, and we have been talking about flooding and this low lying area and how things are there with respect to the uh, uh, flooding issues so to mitigate this actually so we what we have tried in our design is to create a larger sponge or by reviving the wetland on the east side and by creating smaller uh, spillover spaces defined spillover spaces by adding soft edge to the canal we are actually giving um, a room for water basically because that is the necessity of today that you know we have to give room for water uh by doing this we are also making those smaller uh, sponge across the canal and that is what uh, our idea was by you know giving this area uh, along the canal as spillover uh, places for water uh, which also allows um, water to interact with land water to interact with people uh, adding ecological as well as, as well as social benefits to the design and making water as an integral part of our design that was our whole idea uh, throughout so you know the main thought was creating room for water that's what i would say and uh, stop there yeah. thank you so much subha yeah and other show is anything okay nidhi you're going ahead to the next question go ahead yeah uh, it's a very generic question and uh, it really creates so much of enthusiasm in me myself like you know the way people have taken up this competition and people have come from very diverse uh, sectors and they have joined together people have not seen each other they have not uh, met each other especially during the time of covid so can anybody share one example how this diversity helped them in coming out with some good designs so that you know such things can be promote, promoted ahead in the uh, future you know such uh, you know diverse people coming together and bringing about certain changes in an area 
So this is like you know anybody can talk about that. So I I think I she's referring quickly, to yeah I think she's referring to the fact share. that you were together so, as a team for the first time. So I think that's what. Would you like to share something? Yes. In fact, all the other teams might have managed their uh, team work differently, but I can just share my our experience how we managed. So one of our uh, two of our members were in Delhi. Uh, in fact, three of us were in Delhi in different parts of Delhi. One was in. Pune, so Bhagya, you were in Pune, right, or Mumbai? Mumbai. One person was in Netherlands, and there were two members who were working from Belgium. Now all of and these members. And one from Jammu, Kashmir. One from Jammu, yes. Uh, we all had our own professional respect for each other. The uh, brief gave very specific requirements from each professional discipline, so that helped all of us decide and understand what is the role of every individual. We definitely had an anchor in our team. So, uh, Sham Khandekar, he was an anchor. Thankfully, he was such a good anchor that he was listening to everyone and trying to integrate rather than enforcing his uh, design on everyone else. So, luckily, in our case, the whole team was working like feeding into an idea and making sure that the idea is a culmination of everyone's thoughts and ideas together. And then Sham Khandekar would integrate all these ideas together, and then subsequently we would sit and debate. um technology definitely helped but i would say in our case the fact that our roles and responsibilities were clear each of us were able to appreciate uh, the other person's uh, technical qualification and there was an anchor who was able to integrate everyone's thought and was able to very clearly mitigate uh, the differences commonalities and all of those definitely helped us move ahead with business so that's very nice comment yeah very interesting yeah yeah Thank so you so fact, much, everybody. Of the best. Thank you, Nidhi, for your for the question. I think as we are a little short of time, we move ahead to the next group. Shared these two questions for you, and uh, uh, our last audience question uh, it comes from Dr. Joseph Kailath. Joseph, are you there? Yeah. Hi, or me? Good evening. Yeah, are you audible? Yes, yes, very much. Okay. So uh, I think you had one for the organizers, and uh, one which was uh, across many of the teams, if I'm not mistaken. So, would you, which would you yes. like to go ahead with first? I just wanted to know whether the organizers of the Indekuchi uh, would they be interested in taking up the Edapalli Canal project if they were given? That was one of the questions, and uh, the second one was something uh, for. Uh, they had proposed uh, the cycling paths and pedestrians, uh, pedestrian paths along the MG road. I was wondering how they would be able to do that because considering the space, which was so narrow on, along those roads, you know. So right. I, I, anybody could answer those questions. So, so maybe jo- Joseph, you should also introduce yourself a little bit, because I think that yeah. comes partly from your background in Kochi and you're being an orthopedic doctor. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, myself and Urmila were classmates in Cochin, uh, Naval Base Cochin. And uh, as a young boy, I used to walk along Mulisheri Canal, and I know it very well. And uh, I went on to medicine, and uh, Urmila went to become an architect. And uh, it was nice to see you, Urmila. Uh, it is uh, you are moderating the session so well, and uh, such a group of young, vibrant. Enthusiastic landscape architects. Actually, I'm actually I, I'm not I'm out of uh, a fish out of water among you all. No, no. Okay. So, uh, okay. so Would anybody so, answer this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Armila. I think we'll take it uh, from Steam Sponge, uh, Dr. Joseph. So, um, thank you. Actually, the perspective of a user is very important, and I think that's where you know people like you play a fundamental role because you're somebody who's walked that stretch. May probably be using it on a usual day-to-day basis and um, so um the we do agree that mg road is a very tight site and something that was not integrated within the episodes for lsr was that we were in a very initial process of the dpr development and post the you know the recording of the episode we actually went to kochi and we had measured the site we walked that stretch multiple times we saw all the issues that were there and our major agenda was that especially that stretch near the maharaja college and the mulseri canal area is absolutely um, 
you know it's uh, damaged sidewalks there are uh, like there's no women safety or kids safety there's not wide sidewalks are not wide enough plus uh, what we realized was there was an opportunity in the pwd park that is abutting the maharaja college ground and uh, we decided to annex that park because it's a public park but it's actually walled off and completely disconnected from the road so if you actually take a walk uh, any time recently you will notice that park and you will notice that there's no entry or exit because it's all locked up so we decided to annex that and open it up to the public and widen the sidewalk there and integrate a bicycle lane and a bioswale and create this public realm that is not just integrating the blue green infrastructure but also creating a vibrant space for you know people to commute from let's say the metro to the boat jetty for example along the mulaseri canal and um, if you notice the opposite side of that road which is where we have the commercial usage happening we were unable to integrate let's say blue green infrastructures but we were able to put in a cycle track with tree pits so we worked with standards and we also looked at realignment of the road itself we looked at how the median can be reused so some of these strategies are demonstrated in the video that was shot but we evolved it much more in detail after assessing site conditions and uh, the pwd park itself gave us additional 9 meters of uh, you know width that we could adjust and add into beautification as well as you know uh, make it more resilient in nature plus making it safe for kids and women to walk so probably you can see joseph on your next visit <laughs> because kuchin is a place that he visits frequently and plans to settle down also yes yes definitely and we're welcome you're yeah. welcome to come to my house <laughs> yeah. plans visited my house yeah uh, Thank you so much. So uh, we definitely hope that we can um, see that project getting implemented and uh, get more input from users like you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think Joseph's second question is more towards the organizers, where he speaks of a different canal. Samida, you'd like to go for that? Yeah. um i'm sure others other organizers uh, especially dr rajan monalita and uh, monica and fatim will also add uh, but what i would uh, say from the mulaseri canals competition and the project itself from that point of view is that the ideas that we asked through the competition uh, especially if, uh, also emphasizing on the part of scalability so uh, if you see the first three uh, winners uh, they developed a toolkit approach for, uh, as part of their competition entry and this is something which we uh, we believe that can be scaled up to other areas uh, are the other canals uh, although if i'm not uh, i'm not quite sure like edapalli actually uh, comes into two different uh, it basically bisects kochi municipal corporation and the uh, adjacent municipality so here is something which i think both the municipalities can work together and see you know, how the ideas that are developed for the mulaseri canal which is a very dense urban uh, neighborhood can be scaled up because they they are the way they have worked out they can be scaled up so yes uh but uh, so, uh, something yeah. can i just add something uh, on dr uh, joseph's question there is already an ongoing project uh, that is the integrated urban uh, regeneration and uh, water transport system iu iur wts uh, being uh, taken up by the state government and uh, it covers uh, six uh, canals including the edapalli and perandur all the major canals and uh, uh yeah like we have uh, different programs uh, ongoing programs uh, and uh, we will try to kind of on incorporate all that elements we have uh, in the mulaseri canal into that as well so we we'll love to have a lot of uh, discussion with the different uh, agencies uh, working on other canal projects our idea of uh, uh, taking up uh, mulaseri canal was it's a small little uh, uh, stretch 1.6 kilometers less than 2 kilometers very critical and uh, if we can have a very good uh, uh, kind of uh, design proposals like uh, Uh, it's almost on the mean sea level and uh, uh, we, we can have something uh, 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 implementable uh, practical uh, thing for this canal we can kind of uh, 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 model uh, uh, this project uh, uh, 
to other uh, uh, canals as well because canals are the lifeline of Cochin and uh, especially uh, 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 in the background of climate change impact, we will have to kind of bring our canals uh, back to uh, its uh, uh, old glory and uh, uh, and it's for the survival of the city and citizens and not for anything else like uh, so here uh, we have uh, uh, environment uh, uh, taking over the economy and if we bother more about economy we will not be able to survive so that's my add to it thank you thank you so much dr rajan modulita i saw that you uh, started off your camera do you want to add something to it or uh, i was going to say what dr rajan dr. said about, say. The, about the integrated yeah. uh, canal project and uh, basically we had considered it early right at the beginning but we found uh, that for the competition for the clarity of the con competition and we are glad that we went that way uh, we should deal with something which can become like an example because once we have an example of good design set as a benchmark then many components of that can be replicated or scaled up or modified and adapted for different contexts Absolutely. I completely agree with you that having a successfully implemented project on the ground speaks volumes rather than what, as Dr. Rajan mentioned in the beginning, having so many reports on the shelf. It's the implemented project which ultimately sees change happening over there. So I think uh, but then I'll, 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 I'll certainly, Urmila, I would certainly say like uh, Dr. Joseph's concern is uh, a very valid because uh, going by the history of implement uh, implementation yeah. Yeah. and uh, reflection of the aspiration of the people on ground and I think it's uh, there is uh, kind of genuine concern so we'll have to take it very seriously. True, very true. So with this we kind of bring the curtains down on this Entekoche series of landscape vignettes and a very very big thank you to all of you who are here for making this possible. A big thank you to those who could not be present here for various reasons, but were very much a part of these series as well. I also want a special shout out to my colleagues in this effort, especially Vaibhavi Don, Saili Saundalgekar, and the entire team of Newark Unlearn and Neha Shah, Assistant Professor at MR Landscape, as well as the invisible support from the principal and the others at the Ellis Raja School of Architecture. The series has ended we don't plan a sequel as of now. I think the sequel will happen in Kuchi on the ground. But we sincerely hope that it has stirred certain thought processes that all of us would carry ahead in life. Thank you so much, all of you. We've taken a lot of your time and you also have contributed to it willingly. Take care, stay safe and goodbye for now. Thank you so much. <laughs>